Hey, good day everybody, it's Matt here from Matt Cav. So we are carving a spirit whale today. This is part of the Studio in the Lake, uh, Ben, over there at Studio in the Lake, I should say. He's doing a spirit whale challenge, so I thought I'd carve the whale first, and then in part two, I'm going to carve the spirit. And you're going to have to look at part two to kind of understand what I'm doing. But um, first of all, so we will get on with carving this whale. So I've kind of cut out the main shape on the bandsaw. And I'm actually going to use the finger sander for sort of like rounding off sort of the whale. Um, which I have actually found pretty useful, this finger sander. It's sort of like, it's quite nice because there's two reasons. When you carve hardwoods and you're using a burr, you're pretty likely to burn the wood and it takes quite a bit to get rid of material in hardwood. Whereas I'm finding this sander is taking off the wood quite quickly as opposed to even your Katzel flame burr. Uh, you can sort of see there. So what am I carving in today? I am carving an elm. Now elm is a very strong wood. It has got sort of like interlocking fibers. So we're going to get some really intricate parts and thin parts on this whale. So we really need a hard wood to do that. You wouldn't be able to do this kind of small carving with thin parts on it if you were using something like cedar. And we can see here I have changed over to the extreme flame burr and you can see it's starting to burn a little bit there um, that's kind of like ingrained what I'm carving there so ingrain always burns a little bit faster but compared to the sander um, the burr will be moving faster and it's also smaller so it's going to heat up um, through the friction more as well and we are starting to put in the details now now I'm using that uh, diamond inverted cone burr and cutter burrs are very useful for hardwoods as well uh, they tend to leave quite a nice finish now we're working on the tail and I have been using the cutsall flame burr on that but uh, I found the cutsall flame burr is quite difficult on the small parts so I use the cutsall taper burr and there I'm using a one inch this sander that I got off Amazon, it's pretty good. It's not as good as the one that I usually use that I cannot find on Amazon. But uh, this is a good substitute. And it's pretty good. It's sort of like you can change the disc. So I've got probably like an, I think it's like an 80 grit on there now. So it's good for like rounding out the whale and all of that. Sort of just these kind of finishing touches just to shape it up a little bit. Before I start putting in those creases under the mouth. And I found out what those creases are for. They're kind of like an accordion that expands when the water goes in. So first of all, I will put the lines in with that T-shaped burr. And then I will go in with the dis, uh, inverted uh, cone burr. And sort of like widen those lines up. And then I want to soften it out. So I might use a, another diamond burr for that and just get a, a little bit softer and I actually use the disc sander to get a final kind of like adjustment on that and I'm using one of those inverted cone burrs to put the eye in it's like a tiny eye cutter you can sort of go in it's sort of like burnt it a little bit which is nice and then I'm sort of going around the round part and just trying to give it sort of more of a oval kind of shape that's a cutter burr there, a Dremel cutter burr. Then I'm going in with the Dremel engraving diamond burr, just as I like to smooth it out. It's really hard to sand in these parts, so if you can get a diamond burr in there, and you can smooth it out, really light touch there. And you want to put in sort of like these fins, you want to attach them, because it's really difficult to actually do something that sticks so far out um, from the original kind of piece of wood so I am making the fins out of elm as well and I will attach them and this is the benefit of having a scroll saw because you can make these really tiny little cuts I could have probably just about done it on the band saw but it would have been maybe slightly dangerous just showing you there you've got to be careful when you're shaping these with the cutsall flame burr 
because they tend to go around I see right on the end grain it'll fling around so be very very careful and what you can also do is just use the taper burr or a fine burr to shape the uh, fins anything small you want to be very careful with using aggressive burrs because your fingers are going to be closer to the burr and what you can also do is you can actually brace that fin on the table so if it does go over the end it's not going to fling back at you i've got quite a lot of pressure on it there so just really carefully going over it with the flame burr and now i've changed to the uh, fine a taper burr and as you can see it's sort of a lot less aggressive uh, when you go in the end it's not going to like fling around and even if it did hit your hand it's not going to like chew it up that much so I am just using that disc sander again and uh, that's probably a little bit too fast I think for the viewer but um, yeah so I use that disc sander to get the shape right and now we're trying to figure out where it's going to go so I'm just going to like pencil it in a mark there I did have a look at a couple of reference photos and to see where the fins go and I kind of round about there is right this is like not really anatomically correct and I know um, being over at studio in the lake he's been doing whales with fish tails and I don't really know what a fish tail and a whale tail actually looks like so I've just kind of done a tail could be a fish tail could be a whale tail but you know it looks pretty good to me and so just sort of like adjusting it and trying to work out where it's going to sort of like sit and all of that it's sort of like attaching parts onto carvings is real difficult because you've got to get that transition right the angle and all of that kind of stuff so i've just about got it there uh, i think that's pretty good so now we're going to uh, glue it in and you can sort of see there in the middle I had some dust and we've got two pack glue which is an epoxy it's got like a five minute setting kind of well sort of like starts to harden after about five minutes so I'm just adding some of the sawdust there from sanding the whale I don't want to add too much but uh, just enough to sort of like darken it up and it doesn't seem like it's clear So I just, I tend to put it in the hole and also on the fin as well and just try and work out how much I need on each one. So then I'll go and attach it and you kind of want a little bit to squish out. You can sort of see some of it squishing out the side there. Now you might have to hold it for a while. And you can use, I use these kebab sticks for uh, lots of things. And so I'm just sort of like adjusting that glue. I don't want to spread it around too much because you just have to end up taking it off later on. Okay, so we have got up to this stage. Uh, the glue is dried. And um, as you can probably see, um, these look quite different from the original ones. Uh, I don't think they went far enough sort of like going that way so I added these ones on so they kind of look a little bit more natural uh, I think <laughs> who knows um, and I thought well I'll show you how this is really strong wood and so um, like that is pretty thin there I'm trying to break it I can break it I oh, will break it here and just to sort of show you oh, maybe I can't break it there we go. So you can sort of see it has like an interlocking grain. It's really quite strong. And you can sort of see it there. It's sort of like um it didn't just snap in one place. The grain is going that way, so I guess it would be easier to break it that way if it was thin enough, but it's not. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. So it's a really, really strong wood, so it's sort of ideal for this because like these parts are pretty thin and if you would do this like in a real soft wood it's going to break so this is um so elm was used in uh long blow long bow construction and traditionally 
and it's really flexible. Uh, I believe they can use it in um, making axe handles. I think hickory is the best thing to make axe handles out of, but uh, some people make it out of elm because it has that flexibility there and the strength there as well. So how do we get the glue out of there? Well, I haven't done this too many times, but what I did find is if you use sort of like a Dremel, um, the Dremel will generate heat and the glue will mount, and so it will kind of stick to whatever kind of like bits you're using like this, and you can kind of see I've done it here on something. Um, there's actually glue on there, which isn't ideal. Um, I could probably burn it out but it's a bit of a pain. But um, so what I'll try and do is I'll just scrape the majority off and with a knife and then get the rest with the Dremel. So we'll try and get the, rid of like a, the bulk of it. And what happens too is if you use the Dremel, it all kind of like goes soft again. And then it sort of melts it so it sort of makes a bit of a mess on the actual sculpture as well. So what you can do is you can sort of get the majority off and then use the Dremel but use it as a lower at a lower speed. I have got the majority of the glue off and I'm just going to use uh, this Dremel kind of like sanding disc here and I've also shown you these ones here uh, these are, these are um, from Amazon I cannot find this one on Amazon I like this one because it's a little bit smaller than the one I got off Amazon you see I think that's an inch and this is below an inch so but um, it'll do the same thing it's a little bit difficult to use because it's a bit bigger right okay so I will put so this, you really, really need to slow the speed down on these. And so that will hopefully not melt the glue again. So you can sort of hear the Dremel. And that's running at about 10,000 RPM. So you can sort of see there. And what you want to do is, oh, you can't actually see, oh, that was not, the best of filming, sorry. Um, so you don't want to sort of like hold it in one place for too long because you can sort of like heat the heat it up too much. You know, attaching like parts to sculptures is really, really difficult because you have to get this exactly right and connecting to that. So you just sort of try and get it as good as you can and that's what I do anyway. So I think that's looking pretty cool. So we're going to actually put like a darker like uh, wax on here. So it should hide that part in there anyway. So that will look pretty cool. And you can sort of see here, there's a bit of a gap in that one and I could go back in with glue but I do have this other wax that you can actually put in heat up and then you put it in there and it will form like fill in holes and all of that kind of stuff so we'll do that on this side so you get to see another way of doing it I can use this stuff there's heaps of different ways you can actually fill little holes you can put glue in and all of that but what I find with glue is sometimes you accidentally get it on the other stuff and then it's sort of, um, it's sort of like you have to sand it back off again. But with this stuff it's a little bit easier. Uh, the trick is, sorry, big gash in my hand, I'll cover that up. You don't need to see that, that's not very good YouTube stuff. Right, okay, so I'll just take a little bit off here. So I, and as you know, I use this quite a bit, Liberon kind of, um, it's, it is expensive. So I'm gonna put Georgian mahogany in on this. Now I only have mahogany color in this. I think it's kind of like a general kind of color, kind of matches most woods. It kind of looks a little bit um, 
light or darker there, I guess you'd say, but it doesn't really matter in these creases because it's just kind of like filling the gap. So I try and mount that in my hand. Okay, so I've mounted that down so it's quite soft. Not really soft, but it's good enough. So I'll put it in there and then I'll just squish it in. Now I wouldn't use this stuff if I was going to put a varnish over it because this is wax. So as soon as you start putting wax on things, your varnishes are not going to stick to it. It's kind of like an oily kind of substance on there. I'm just trying to work it into that area and then I'll sort of like take it off. Hang on, that's looking pretty good actually. That's pretty good. Kind of looks better than that side. Maybe I should have done it on that side as well. I think uh, it'll be fine. Right, so that's our uh, wax filler stick. Put that back, this will last for ages. Okay, so the next part is actually putting on a wax. And what I do is I'll get some paper towels. Hang on a second. And let's put a little whale on that. And so, you know, I sort of like use these Liberon waxes. So we've got like, I use different ones. A real dark finish, you go for dark oak, uh, medium oak, and Georgian mahogany. Just got this brush here. So I just work it in, and what you'll find is with this, is it sort of really this sort of like shines up to a sort of like a satin finish and it'll make the um, grains stick out a little bit more as well. Okay, I should be wearing gloves, but I haven't got any. So, it's, um, just pretend I'm wearing gloves, okay? I'm bound to get somebody to complain. Oh, you should be wearing gloves. I know. Okay, so putting all that on. Let's carry on with this. So, then you tend to wipe it off. So you see the change in colour there. Okay, so what I've done here is I have just sort of like got a scotch bright and cut a round circle in it and drilled a hole in it and then put it onto a mandrel. You can sort of see, I'm going to try and show you sort of like how it polishes up. So you only need to go lightly on it. Trying to get the light right. So you can sort of see that part's polished up, whereas that part hasn't. Try and do the. Uh... Yeah, So we got that, that's not done, and that is done. So it's a really kind of like, not, it's nice and natural, it doesn't look like it's got a part on it, it just kind of looks polished, you know, which I really like.
Thank you all for watching. So this is the whale part of the challenge. And the next part is the spirit of the challenge. And they will be combined together. Uh, you'll have just have to wait and see what I do with that. See you next time.